Assalamu alaikum and welcome back. I uh, hope you've charged your cups, new cup of coffee, new cup of tea. Uh, you've got a little bit of food in front of you. Um, <laughs> of course, not alcohol, though. Because uh, no. this is what we talked about before the break. The prohibition of alcohol, the utter genius and wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, through the beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You know, just banning alcohol and what that must have taken. It's extraordinary. No, I mean, we, we all know that there are no more prophets to come. Mm. We know this. Yes. Yeah. The, the, the seal of the prophets, the last of the prophets, was our beloved Muhammad yes. sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yeah. So, but, but can you imagine mm -hmm. if another prophet came down today yep. and he had to ban alcohol, can you imagine how difficult that might be? In society nowadays. But do you know what? It's exactly what happened back then. Yes. Because yeah. alcohol was so widely used yep. and so ingrained in their society. Yeah to yep. ban it at that stage. This is why Allah chose to do it in four distinct yes, stages. Absolutely. So it didn't come as too much of a shock to yeah. people, I'll have yeah. and, and it, it was yeah. easier to accept yeah. by people. Amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, but I remember hearing, and I, and I, and I must quote this because I just think it's a, a wonderful, wonderful way of phrasing it. The Prophet, peace be upon him, instructed the Ummah to avoid any intoxicating substances, even in small amounts. He, peace be upon him, said, if it intoxicates in a large amount, it is forbidden even in a small amount. <laughs> That's just brilliant. It's great, That's isn't it? Brilliant. It's brilliant. And the number of times oh, where we're reading through the Hadith, whether it's, you know, for, 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 for pleasure, for knowledge, uh, or to, to create a video or something that we're going to put out, and we just sit there and you read it just going, it's genius. Genius. Ask G oh, oh, how do you think to say like that, you know? <laughs> and then you go, oh, obvious now, but 1,400 years ago. I know, I know. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's just so, beautiful. As he, peace be upon him, said, if it in intoxicates in uh, large amounts, then it's forbidden in even small amounts. I mean, this is why we try to avoid alcohol in any form. Yeah. Even the small amounts that are sometimes used in cooking or medication or perfume mm. or even in food additives. Yeah. We try to avoid all of them. Yep. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only wants good for us. Alcohol is incredibly harmful. Mm. So let's take some time to appreciate the incredible wisdom of this prohibition. Yes. Yeah, <clears throat> and again, it, it's, it, it's one of those, those things where it's important to remember that um, we don't, well, sometimes we just don't know. We don't know why we've been told something. So 1,400 years ago, when this was put down to people, many, I'm guessing, may have challenged it. Oh, I'm sure uh, they did. And, and, yeah. and may have, have, there'd have been some pushback against yeah. it, because we just don't always know. But actually, as times have changed and as things have moved on, we're getting to know. We're getting to know. And according to NHS figures, the burden of alcohol on the NHS in England continues to rise, with official data showing that there were, there were more than 1.2 million alcohol-related admissions to hospitals in the year 2017 to 2018. 1.2 million. Wow. Around 20% of people admitted to UK NHS hospitals are harmful drinkers. Mm. Now this means that alcohol is having <coughs> a negative impact on either their mental or physical health. Mm. A further 10% are alcohol dependent. Mm. So that's 30% of all admissions to yes. NHS hospitals. Yep. I mean, let's, let's just, just have a think about a this. Now, let's imagine that you are uh, uh, waiting for an ambulance to come. Yeah. You're waiting at home because you or one of your loved ones has yeah. had a heart attack and you've yeah. phoned 999 and the ambulance is on its way. Yeah. Imagine every second matters. Mm. Every second matters yeah. in that situation. Seconds can make yeah. a difference between life and not. Yeah. Seconds. Yeah. Now, when we look around and, and see that 30% of admissions are because of alcohol mm. and you're waiting for that ambulance, yeah. it's really not fair of these people to do this. No. Nope. Really not fair. Extraordinary. And I, I just not said enough, in my humble opinion. Um, and if anybody doubts these figures, I mean anybody, um, <laughs> Go into accident and emergency on a Friday. Well, maybe not now, <laughs> not no, at this point in time. <laughs> but normally, go to accident and emergency on a Friday or Saturday evening and just see, A, how long you would have to wait and then look around and see 
Why? Yeah. Hmm. It's because most of the people in A&E on a Friday and Saturday night yep. are there because they are <coughs> drunk. Yes. They're, they're there because they have drunk too much. Mm, and it has overwhelmed them yep. in some way. Yeah. In fact, according to Public Health England, alcohol is in England's second biggest cause of premature death behind tobacco. Wow. Second cause of death behind tobacco. Wow. 34% of men and 28% of women exceed their current consumption guidelines on at least one day and did so at least one day in the last week. And I'm thinking, just one day? Just one day? <laughs> just one day? <laughs> it's possibly a little more than the that. The mere fact <laughs> that the government has to put a guideline figure should tell you that maybe it's not the right thing to do. Correct. Mm. The Alcohol Education Trust provides some disturbing statistics on alcohol-related incidents. Yeah. 530 people died from alcohol poisoning in the UK in 2018. Mm -hmm. And that's alcohol poisoning. That's not, you know, uh, issues arriving from long use of alcohol or, or accidents. That's somebody who, in one bout, has consumed so much alcohol that it has actually poisoned their system to death to death killed them killed them. terrifying we've already said that a third of all accident and emergency uh, attendance and ambulance costs come from alcohol related uh, situations in england and we have another we have another caller alhamdulillah uh, so as assalamu alaikum Hello, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, are you all right? Alhamdulillah, very good, good indeed, thank Muhammad, you. And you? Uh, Yusuf and uh, Junaid. Very well indeed, thank you. How are you? Alhamdulillah. I'm all right, not so bad. Good topic you've chosen today. Ah. Look, alcohol, one of the biggest problems is alcohol. If you look at the... Pro I was in Chicago in oh, wow. 1990. Mm -hmm. Now, Chicago, you know yourself, it was a provision. Yes. They had the prohibition. Yeah. Yes. In the 1930s. Yet, people still went out and they got themselves intoxicated. Yes. Now, the thing is, we can talk about it till doomsday. Greed. Mm. This is what's destroying the planet. Mm -hmm. This is what's... If you look at... Uh, I mean, I'm an international human rights lawyer. And I've always researched on what's causing the crime. Mm. You know, in England, it's alcohol or it's drugs yeah. related. Yeah, yeah. And the biggest problem is... You know, I mean, uh, when I used to go to court and used to see the people used to come in there, you know, like they didn't know what day it was. Oh. Yeah, yeah. And that, that's the problem, you mm. know, intoxication is banned. Why is forbidden in Islam? Mm. You know, I, I always say that Islam is not a religion where everything is forbidden except for which it's permitted. Mm. It is a religion where everything is permitted except for for that which is strictly forbidden. Exactly. exactly. Now, what is forbidden is <laughs> yeah. alcohol. Yes. yes. Okay. Now, Brother Yusuf, which one is Yusuf? One on the That's me. <laughs> Look, Yusuf, I'm going to say something. That's Yusuf, is it? Yeah. Look, one of the greatest... I never ever forget it because it was a, a scene from heaven it was a scene from heaven when God says to Yusuf, whose turn is it to go to earth and save somebody who's disillusioned? Mm. And so y Yusuf goes and finds and says, this is turn, this angel's turn. And that angel goes to his Lord. He says, my Lord, uh, you've called for me to go to earth. And uh, the Lord says, the Lord Almighty says, I have a person who's in difficulty. Will you go and help? Is he disillusioned of life? <coughs> and uh, 
the angel says now god says no he's not this losing life he is ending the life the precious gift of life that i've given him mm. go down to earth now you remember the film you remember the film yeah yeah ha huh? hey it was a jimmy stewart film it's a wonderful life that's right yes I yes i never yeah, 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 ever yeah. forget that opening moment yeah and clarence and god says to this man he's going to kill himself this yeah. person's disillusion with the gift of life i've given him mm. assalamu yeah. alaikum wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh thank you so much for calling lovely call <coughs> and i and so many good points in there i have to say the one that really stuck out for me was when you spoke about um in the 1920s and 30s in america america tried to ban alcohol yes they did america had prohibition and look at all the problems it caused when yep. they tried to stop in one fell swoop yep. the entire country drinking what they actually created was an underground criminal network yes they did that still exists today yes it does yes that was yes. The, the the ramifications yep so if you if you then go back 1400 years and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite wisdom and utilizing the prophet peace be upon him managed to ban alcohol for all muslims and for 1400 years we've all accepted the fact that absolutely it, it's a terrible thing to do absolutely uh, it's just genius it's amazing it's just amazing we were we were looking at some statistics yes given to us by uh, the the health service mm -hmm. given to us by some certain charities yeah. that uh, that look at alcoholic uh, alcohol problems yeah. to reinforce within society the, the wisdom of and we're just uh, just looking at these to reinforce absolutely yeah. so uh, let, let's just carry on d down this okay. line because yeah. you know i i find these interesting but profoundly disturbing at yes. the same time yeah. you know in 2018 it's estimated that there were 240 fatal drink drive accidents yeah. this is people getting it back into their cars yes. after they've been out drinking yep. and causing a uh, causing 240 deaths that's unnecessary in deaths apparently and uh, 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 the reason why i think this lands so so hard is that this is after the government has spent so much money educating people on how dangerous it is to get in a car yeah when you when you drunk and, and yeah. you would like to think that, that society has changed now in my parents time you know uh, uh, my parents would would say oh, no there were times when people wouldn't think twice yeah. now it's frowned upon yet 240 people a year still die yeah extraordinary you know being impaired by alcohol is thought to be a contributory factor in 13% of pedestrian road deaths wow So you're wow. not safe when you're walking. No. Extraordinary. <laughs> no. um, for 16 to 24 year olds, think about that. The, 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 the precious, our precious youth. For 16 to 24 year olds, 21% of deaths in males and 9% of deaths in females have been attributed to alcohol consumption. So a, a quarter of the, the youths, the deaths of, of, of youths, is as a result of alcohol. Subhanallah. In the year ending March 2018, 39% of all victims of violence in England and Wales said that their attacker was affected by alcohol at the time of the attack. Mm. I mean it's estimated that there were 561,000 violent alcohol related incidents in the year 2017 to 18. Wow. <laughs> and I know these are are frightening statistics and upsetting statistics but it's it's so important to discuss these because it reinforces the beauty of Islam and and the knowledge that was brought to, uh, and given to us 1400 years ago and how important it is alcohol misuse is a factor in 30% of all suicides on an annual basis 30% It's, it beggars belief doesn't it 30% mm. hospital admissions for young people under 18 in the three year period 2016 to 19 were 11233 people under the age of 18 mm. brought to hospital because of alcohol because of alcohol spanala uh, we know the pressure that the nhs has been put under we know that yeah. we know that it comes out of our tax money that 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 funds that and it's it's constantly struggling 
it wouldn't struggle half as much if you could take away those figures. In fact, in England, there were 357,659 uh, admissions where alcohol-related diseases had brought about the, re the requirement for that, ad that admission. Uh, th whether it be injury or the condition, the primary diagnosis was that it was alcohol-related and that alcohol was the external cause that, 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 that meant that that happened. Wow. You know, 4% of 16 to 24-year-old men drink more than 50 units a week. And 3% of women aged 16 to 24 drink more than 35 units a week. Now, this puts them at risk of alcohol dependency, mm -hmm. mental and behavioural problems, long-term health risks such as liver disease, yep. and etc., etc., etc. Wow, wow. Um, I just want to close these statistics with what I the one that shocked me most, if you like. Yeah. Um, every year, there are 12,000 or so, uh, well, certainly in the year 2006 to 2007, there were 12,180 exclusions for drug and alcohol offences in English schools. That was up 70% on the... On the pre sorry, it, that, it, that was up 17% up since the year 2006. That was last year. I do apologise. It's 70% since, uh, up from when the figures started being collated in 2006, 2007. Last year, 12,180 exclusions from school. From what? school, because of drug and alcohol. Yeah. It's okay. that children. So, do we blame the children for this? Um, we do, we blame the, do we blame the, the staff at school? There's do we blame the children themselves? Do we, do, who do we blame for it's this? A societal, it's a societal. Societal? Is to blame. <laughs> But you've got to say, it, it, it comes down to society, society, you know, this acceptance, this acceptance of alcohol, that, that children look at their, at their parents, at their peers, and think, well, if they're doing it... Their role models are drinking. Their role models are drinking. Yeah, and it's not just an acceptance, it's almost like enforced. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. subliminally in yeah. enforced. You look at adverts, you look at uh, billboards, you look yeah. at... You know, everybody, they all seem <coughs> to have a glass in their hands and yep. they're all happy and ev yep. everybody's smiling. And uh, This is what's conveyed. This yep. is conveyed out there. And our children are looking at that thinking, well, this is normal then. Mm. This is normal. So yep. this is what I'm going to do. So consequently, over 12,000 children were excluded from school last wow. year wow. because they were drunk. Yep. or intoxicated by other drugs. Yep. I mean, come on. Children. We've got to get a grip on this. Yep. We have got to do something about this. We've got to look after our children and make sure that this doesn't happen to them. Come yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. Extraordinary. Extraordinary. Um, if we consider, uh, well, first of all, we've got these stats, but we've also consider, you know, the effect it has on the human body. We're blessed with this vessel. We're blessed with this vessel that carries around uh, our soul from the, the day we're born till the day we pass into the... To, to, uh, to we pass away and we're told that we should look after it that we should look after this vessel but what does alcohol do what are the implications well first of all it affects our brains mm. yeah or the brains of people who drink the stuff yeah uh, the immediate effects of drinking on your, your brain can include uh, slurred speech yeah slow reactions yeah. impaired memory <coughs> even blackouts I mean, over the longer term, heavy drinking can cause a number of different types of brain damage. Mm. Overuse of alcohol can worsen symptoms of many mental health problems. In particular, it can lead to low mood and anxiety. Wow. It, wow. Who, wants, say, who wants that? Well, exactly. Surely that's <laughs> enough. And the weird thing is, if you, if you had this conversation with an awful lot of people who drink, they would acknowledge it. They would acknowledge this, that they're looking for solutions, they're looking for answers. But it's not restricted to the brain, the mouth and throat. If you regularly drink, well it says above 14 units a week, but if you regularly drink, are you increasing your risk of developing cancer of the mouth, larynx, which is the voice box, pharynx, which is the upper throat, and the esophagus, which is your food pipe. And this risk increases further if you both uh, drink and smoke. Terrifying. Alcohol affects the heart. Mm. Yeah, we all know that smoking affects the heart, lack of exercise, wrong, wrong diet, etc, etc. Et but alcohol specifically affects the heart in yep. a very, very <coughs> uh, difficult way. I mean, yeah. it's, it, this is awful. So there's a lot of evidence uh, that the risk to heart disease starts to rise when consuming above 14 units of alcohol per week. Mm. 
Heavy drinking is also associated with both hypertension, high blood pressure, and indeed strokes. Wow. People have strokes, and this is down to alcohol. Yep, yep, extraordinary. Mm. And in both men and women, it has a, a real detrimental effect on breast tissue. That's for both men and women. More than 50 studies have confirmed that alcohol is a particular risk factor for breast cancer. Alcohol seems to increase production of the female hormone estrogen. And excess estrogen is, is, is what can cause and create um, cancerous breast cells. Alcohol affects your stomach. Drinking too much can cause gastritis, which is inflammation of the stomach lining. Mm. It can cause stomach ulcers. Yep. It can al also lead to uncomfortable reflux. You know that acid oh, that you get crikey. up, up your, your esophagus and yes. it just hurts? Yeah, yeah. Heavy drinking can in fact lead to stomach and bowel cancers. Wow, wow. Um, the liver. Uh, and if you ask most people who do drink, what do you think is going to be the biggest implication? They would say the liver. This is just one of many, but the liver, it's probably, it's the big, it's the big one. Uh, most alcohol that goes into your body is processed by your liver. Um, if your liver has to break down too much alcohol, the health of the liver will suffer. This isn't an if, this is a, a will suffer. Long term drinking too much alcohol can lead to a fatty liver, hepatitis, which is inflammation of the liver, and psoriasis, which is scarring of the liver, and also cause liver cancer. SubhanAllah. Alcohol can affect the reproductive system. Men may suffer temporary impotence after a bout of long-term uh, long drinking. Long-term dependent drinking mm. can cause some organs to shrink. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Janaid? Well, not a choice. It's a family but show. It's a family say. show. Let's leave it at that, shall we? That's all we need but to say. People need to know this. So well, well the people that need to know this are the people that drink. Yes. Uh, <laughs> extraordinary. But it's again, it's a demonstration of the wisdom of Allah, the beauty of Islam. It's extraordinary. With all the harm that's done through the consumption of alcohol, it's no wonder that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden this substance. We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his infinite wisdom and mercy will only make something haram and unlawful if it's harmful to us as human beings. You know, Allah forbids us to consume alcohol. I think we've made that point very clear yep. this evening. And it's for this reason, practicing Muslims try their best to shun alcohol and the, the beverage. They, they avoid going to places <coughs> where alcohol is served and consumed. Yes. So as to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mm -hmm. and to fulfill his commands. Mm. Come on. So we seek refuge in Allah against alcohol and intoxicant substances and their harmful effects. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to refrain from all harmful substances. Amen. Inshallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also guide us back here next week. Because we're we running towards week. the end of the show. Same time next week, between <laughs> six and seven. We love being here. We hope you enjoy watching us as much as we enjoy being here. Between now and then, stay safe. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum.